You're not cheating on your wife if you eat my lemon square. Your lemon squares taste like ass. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Trace Thurman, and this is Joe Lipset. We are with Bloody Disgusting's Horror Queers podcast. Um, Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we talk a lot about queer horror, but uh, yes, we are here with Theo Germain, Austin Crew, Monique, uh, Monique Kim, Anna Lore, Cooper Coach, and Darwin Del Favreau of They Slash Them. <laughs> We're right. much more excited than that, I promise you. Y- y- y'all are giddy as fuck. <laughs> Um, okay, well, so why, why don't we just get off to the top of this? Okay, um, for prep work for all of y'all, did y'all talk to or uh, any former campers or even, dare I say, employees of conversion therapy camps? Or um, did you visit any of these things to prepare for your roles in this film? Me personally, I did not. I mm-hmm. would say, I would say me personally, I had an experience of kind of localized, sorry, love y'all, familial fam- conversion therapy to where, <laughs> you know, I've had my share of experiences that I could pull from. Um, and it honestly made it more authentic because mm-hmm. the characters are coming into it really not knowing what to expect. So right. it kind of was, worked. it worked. Yeah. I think going off of that, yeah, I I just drew from my own experiences of not wanting to be who I was growing up um so kind of just tapping into that old version of myself which was really cathartic but also really beautiful and healing to kind of go back through that and then go through Stu's journey so we had some discussions as well about how conversion isn't just camps you know obviously conversion therapy is its own thing but people in your own life try to convert you all the time when they question your sexuality or doubt your sexuality or say you know they don't believe you or they don't support you. That's also a conversion kind of in its own right. Um, for me, I, I, I use the famous piece of media, obviously Boy Erased is a really heartbreaking and yeah. amazing oh. book and film um, that kind of goes through what a modern day conversion therapy camp was. So that was really useful um, to use. Mm-hmm. I watched Pray Away because it had just come out yeah. before oh, we started. Mm-hmm. I watched it on the plane to Georgia. Yeah. And, and John <laughs> oh my Logan, uh, yeah, John Logan actually sent us an extensive packet of research on uh, conversion therapy. So uh, I found that very helpful, and it, and it included firsthand accounts of um, right. experienced it. So that was super helpful. I watched so many pieces of media that were about the history of conversion therapy, Um, even a lot of stuff that was like political and involved like ex-gays and ex-ex-gays and, you know, people who were involved in these movements and then were coming out later and like reckoning with the damage that they had done. Um, A lot of like news clippings, like a lot of reading about the history of conversion therapy and just like, you know, transphobic and homophobic oppression over, you know, the past, you know, basically like a couple hundred years, especially because the camp is something that is listed as, um, is said has been around for a long time in the movie. Yeah, yeah, basically like anything I could get my hands on, whether it was a podcast or whether it was an interview with someone, um, a lot of, uh, watched a lot of personal testimonies about people who, you know, clearly were LGBTQ and were just like, no, this is wrong. And like, I was really, I really wanted to understand the psychology of it and also, you know, drew on my own experiences as well, um, which kind of sucked sometimes. I would love to shout out the cast actually for that, because I think all of us had to spend a lot of time reflecting and digging into our own pain and queer pain in general. Mm-hmm. And that sort of made the experience very heavy, but every single person here was so committed to bringing an authentic you know, experience to the screen. Well, I think that's what's unique though, right? Like, I mean, like not to say that we all, like we never have queer actors playing queer roles, but this is really kind of a, a momentous occasion to have something with this subject matter played by a cast of entirely queer actors so yes i mean like you have that lived all of you have the lived experiences to to feed into your roles for this totally yes absolutely 
<laughs> yeah, there's meant like to be you. a question there, Trace. <laughs> oh no, I, I, I mean, it was a comment. I just like, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Hey, oh, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. It, it is noted. It is kind of a question that, like, you know, John Logan and and Scott, you know, the EP and everyone was really committed to that. Like, it yeah. was it was definitely super intentional and like they wanted it to be moment, momentous. Like, it meant a lot to the whole cast and crew that it's an entirely queer group of yeah mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like doing it right, you know, and taking it really seriously. I think everybody knew that was really important because it's like so many people have suffered because of this you know and we wanted to like respect them you know and like right, try right. to do it right and mm -hmm. like try you know really hard to not just you know it's so easy for things to become like trauma porn or for things to become you know yep. something yep. that's <laughs> not very deep um and i think that everybody's commitment to respect and like honoring the past really showed in the film personally. and everybody's character is like mad layered yeah so, seriously yeah. So everybody's character is yeah. yes and i think yeah. that's what makes it not trauma porn is that everyone was committed to not just playing a sad queer person like you know we have the perfect the fucking perfect moment where like we're showing queer joy like that was super important to us too like these are layered characters these are leads these are heroes like mm -hmm. that that is a scene too where i i, I love the inclusion of the, of the perfect scene but it's also like it's so inherently queer <laughs> to have like <laughs> yeah. to have a musical number in your slasher movie <laughs> yeah it's john logan it's john logan it yeah. wouldn't be a john, yeah. john logan you already know john logan. <laughs> yeah yeah so coming back around to the characters and the kind of authentic representation how much insight did you folks have into like the way your characters were developed like were you able to work with john on shaping or like contributing dialogue or was it kind of like no it's on the page and you're just sort of bringing your own experiences to the performance i think that's a question for you when you have oh, the best I, answer i mean a little bit of both um in terms of the script we pretty much stuck to what was written but in terms of developing the character i can only speak for myself on this it was super collaborative from the beginning um for veronica john and i decided she needed to have cool hair, so I chopped off my hair for the role. <laughs> that um, was such an exciting day. It was, Theo, was, Theo was with me when for support when I chopped off my hair, and thank God, because Aww. I was crying. Um, yeah, but I mean, also, so yeah. Fun. So good. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, but also, um, in creating the tattoos and creating my backstory, John was on board right away. Um, I, it was so important to me that the audience knew that my character was Korean-American because it's not mm -hmm. explicitly written on the script. So I, I had a Korean right. tattoo on my neck um, that says, which translates to, can you hear my heart? Because mm. you know, for LGBTQ people of color, we have to talk about intersectionality. Mm -hmm. And it was just really important to me that that was represented properly in the mm -hmm. film. He was really collaborative. Yeah. We, we, were, we got to just really have our, we got to have a say and, and um, and explore and create these these characters and bring ourselves to them, bring our own uniqueness to them. That's what he wanted us to do. And he uh, gave us the space to do that. He was committed to that too. He yeah. very much was like, yeah. literally the first meeting I think we all had together, he was like, listen, I am a like white cisgender gay man. I am from a yeah. different generation. There are things that I'm yeah. trying to learn. There are things that I don't know yet. I'm gonna do the best that I can to, you know, meet everybody where they're at and also listen to people. Um, and if there's something that it doesn't seem like I, it, like, if there's something that I've written that's like not right, tell me how, you know, tell me what I would need to say or what I would need to write in order for it, you know, to sound like it's authentic. Um, and not everybody's like that. Like not every direct writer director is actually like, like able to put themselves aside enough mm -hmm. in order to serve the art. Um, They'd rather explain to you why their script is like, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. like, they're like, so perfect. This is why you would say this because uh, instead, was, let me hear uh, your experience. I mean, it's not just it's like not just directed by even like in the queer community, and that all cis white gay men are like that. <laughs> <laughs> You said it. We didn't say it. You said it. Hey, we, we will we come to it. it. We will own it. <laughs> like, we know. Because <laughs> I think the film does, like, a really good job of, you know, like, I think for a lot of folks, particularly of a certain generation, things like pronouns are still this scary thing where it's like, oh, how am I meant to keep track of all the changes? And you're just like, it's not that hard. But you also have to be open-minded enough to let someone educate you, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like, there's still, you know, 
there's still oppression. It's differing levels depending on who you are, but it's like, can I think that for queer people, you know, because we all kind of have a shared history, it's important for us to be able to connect across generational lines and across mm -hmm. different lines. And like, you know, at the end of the day, we might only be, you know, we might only have each other's backs, you know, especially because of what's going on in the country right now. So like, I also felt very excited to learn, you know, the shit that I learned from John. Like, I feel like I learned so much from him, you know, and so much from his perspective as well. And I felt respected by him, you know. It was also really special. We got to have, before we even started shooting, we had a sensitivity training that Scott Turner yes. Schofield led yeah. for us and the crew and everyone. The entire um, crew took yeah. the training. had to take it. About pronouns, about saying y'all instead of you guys, about like, right. yeah. all, of, all of these kinds of things that just really kind of set the tone for what the, you know, what the camaraderie is supposed to look like and be like when we get to set, which I thought was really, really helpful. And, and so it just made everyone feel seen and heard and supported. And it was top to bottom too. There were, we had trans crew members, we had mm -hmm. trans stand-ins, we had like, it was, it was really cool. And it made the set like a really safe place to be. Mm -hmm. And if anybody felt uncomfortable about something, like Scott, Scott. especially was on it. He yeah, was like, he was our therapist. <laughs> right. <He> was <laughs> <laughs> was wearing like four hats so many hats so, so many, many hats ep intimacy was... coordinator yeah therapist, therapist. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay now the floodgates have opened tell us about yeah there's two key moments of intimacy <laughs> and trace and i were both very uh pleased is the right word the wrong word um <laughs> are you sure that was a question <laughs> mark oh, no. there was no question there just please they're they're really hot scenes i mean even though they're one is scenes. like <laughs> Because <laughs> um, we no, never I, we never see that either, right? Mm. Like we so often see like, oh, it's a, a kiss on the cheek and then a fade to black, and it's like we are seeing kind of lingus, we are seeing uh, anal. Well, I mean, not seeing. We are but seeing enough of it. <laughs> no, you're, you're okay. okay, but like that's the uncut version. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What <laughs> version are you seeing? Peacock, no. yeah. <laughs> We're I'm seeing whole. Yeah, I think I, I, I wish you could. I wish you could like uh, read the script and the descriptions that John does with this movie that is celebrating the beauty of it, you know, beauty yes. of gay sex that uh, sometimes, you know, we, it's always involved when we do in gay sex scenes, the shame or right. whatever. Yeah. And here it's just so clear that he wants to celebrate beauty. Oh, and, you're giving me chills. Yeah, and how we, you know, we, we are special and unique and we need to be celebrated and have more of those frames, you know, in this interest, industry, in my opinion. Yeah, I so, think everyone on board was just committed to making it authentic as possible. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious, and this is just talking about someone who doesn't like work in the industry. So what is it like working with an intimacy coordinator? I'm just curious. It's really like choreographing a dance. Mm -hmm. So okay. you, you put, you know, you put all the moves together, you know exactly where every hand is going to go, where, how you're going to move, when you're going to kiss, what it's going to be like. And you kind of go through that step by step until you're ready to kind of live in it. And then it, it allows you to kind of have the freedom to feel safe to, to live in it. And you know, it, it just makes you more comfortable. And he, Scott was just there, you know, it, it was a closed set when we were doing the, the um, sex scenes, um, but he was there and he was always making sure that we were comfortable. And um, it's just, it just makes you feel safe. The majority of our cast and crew were queer, so that helps too. That sense of family right. that we were together and we're protected there. You know, in a Blumhouse movie with John Logan, so it's mm -hmm. just uh, we knew that we we're doing something special, and it, it makes it easier. I mean, the hardest part of that scene for me was not getting sunburned. No. <laughs> I <laughs> Darwin and Cooper are in like this like shady ass cottage, and y'all are just out there on the pier. <laughs> So shady. <laughs> I got delicate skin. <laughs> so speaking of a dance, can you folks tell us what it was like to effectively shoot a music video for Pink? <laughs> yeah, speak, speak, speaking of choreography, by the way. I was fulfilling my Glee fantasy. So thank you, John Logan. <laughs> yes. It was a super joyful day for us. It was the last day that all the campers were shooting a group scene together, um, like after okay. that just individual stuff. So it was like really fun to just sort of shake off the intensity that we, you know, had been through and and 
enjoy each other. And I'm wearing my ring today, our, our co-star um, Koi Tan. She got us all rings that say perfect on them, oh. put them on our cast chairs. So we all got a little ring for it. Yeah, it was really, I thought it was like fun and so like, fun. It was a great so day. Fun. Yeah, it just was like yeah. joyful. Just dancing and stuff. And he told me that he was like, can you Vogue? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I had never Vogue before. I'd never been oh. to a ball, never done anything like that. So I just went on YouTube, had to look up some stuff, and Wait, like I literally just, say, just ended up being just what? looked up YouTube videos and perfect voguing. Well, like, okay. I, I was like, I, I, Yo, I Austin feel like... got moves. Austin has Austin moves. Austin. Oh my god! Dance like, battle really after we, we, we was, I feel like we all really tapped in, and it was like it was the last time that we were all gonna be together so we just i don't know we just threw caution to the wind and like went crazy. i definitely cried that day well, oh yeah one thousand percent we there wasn't it's, much it's acting. cathartic that was all genuine well and i think yeah. that's also having an all queer cast you're looking around and you're seeing the joy the characters are having but you're also oh my god i am gonna cry <laughs> also like you're having you're experiencing joy with all of your queer cast members and you're like we're here we're alive we're happy we're mm. out like it's just a great feeling well so on that note then so what was the environment like filming on set like, I mean, like, I, I, there is a lot of serious stuff, a lot of horror, horror stuff happening in this horror film, but it's also very, like, positive and light and optimistic in so many scenes. So I guess, like, what, 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 what was your filming experience like? Like, what was the vibe like uh, behind the scenes? I mean, making a horror movie is fun. It was really fun. <laughs> it's really, it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's fun. We As were in this little hotel together, like trying to be COVID quarantined, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, we were literally codependent. We're like yeah. texting each other, like yeah. on days, like, yes. what are you doing? Yes. Do you want to get coffee? <laughs> get dinner? Like, what are you guys doing? Do you want to come watch a movie? Like, just all the time. <laughs> Yeah, and, and there was, was there no was summer camp. <laughs> it was yeah, summer it really camp, yeah. was. And there was no internet or Wi-Fi on set. So oh, we were wow. forced oh. to talk. To, you're like, oh, yeah. but no, but it forced us to talk to each other. And uh, imagine, imagine, imagine what did people do back in the it day? It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it, was like, it was definitely, it felt like when, when we first came, it felt like camp because yeah. we all didn't know each other. We all didn't know, like we're, we're, we are authentically like queer people, mm -hmm. different places in our journey, had different journeys to get there. So it's like to talk to each other and just kind of, I don't know, glean from each other, feel seen and just connect, other. learn. Yeah, like it, it was just really rewarding at the end of the day. I feel like I've made lifelong friends. I feel like I've made lifelong friends. Yeah, I do. Um, I do. Out of yeah. this. No, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it was just incredible. As right. like someone who's bisexual, sometimes it's like, I feel a little like, I don't know if I'm going to be totally accepted in the community. I, right. I, like, yeah. I've, been, I've been out for like a decade, but I really don't feel like I felt proud until I met these people. Like, mm. I, I don't, don't I mean, no, I'm not going to cry. No, but, no, it's because no, there's, there's, really, there's, there's stigmas in the queer. It's like, you know, yeah, there's yeah, a, the old dodge. Yeah, it's like, I oh, fight them. I was yeah, so accepted and so validated. And I really, it like totally changed my life. Aww. Yeah. There's yeah, something just, important for me just um, because English is not my first language uh mm -hmm. that uh, there's a layer of of queerness language whatever you want to call mm -hmm. that uh is that identification and we kind of you're unique each of us but we mm -hmm. understand each other mm -hmm. yeah um that i think for me it's just like very beautiful to immediately have that that connection uh, i wish i had more of that in like in sets um but we're, we're getting there we're getting there yeah hmm. uh -huh. So Cooper, you said that you had a lot of fun uh, making horror films and Trace and I have had the pleasure of checking out Swallowed, which is the Ooh. other queer horror film that you've been a part of. Uh, are you <laughs> particularly you attracted oh, to yeah, like, we saw, really we saw challenging, it. risky material? Or? Oh yeah, you've seen uh, a lot of me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we, we absolutely have. <laughs> Queer, pa queer panic. <laughs> um, what was the question? <laughs> uh, just, what's attracting you to these kinds of particularly risky sort of, because really in some ways, both Swallowed and They Slash Them are kind of doing almost like avant-garde, like very forward thinking queer horror. Like a lot mm -hmm. of the time it's, you know, hey, there's a gay best friend over here. The, yeah. And you're just yeah. like, okay, cool. Um, no, these stories, the queer people are at the center <laughs> of the of the story. Um, yeah. Honestly, the question is, is interesting because 
Um, I mean, I really just like auditioned for stuff and I happen to have gotten these two. Um, and I've wanted to work with Carter for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've known each other. We met in New York like six years ago and there have been projects that had come and that I got close on and it never ended up happening. And then I got swallowed and the script was just like, I was just like, wow, this <laughs> is a ride. And I think it's just, if I read something that I'm like, wow, I don't know if I could do this. This is really scary to me. That's something that I want to do. I like a challenge and I want to be, I, I want to do things that I don't think that I can do. Mm -hmm. um, and cause I think it's, it's more fun that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, I love that Cooper's you know, answer was, I'm not attracted to queer horror. Queer horror is attracted, attracted to me. <laughs> it just comes to me naturally, right? That's a good answer. Well, anyone willing to do full frontal, that's like Hollywood's like, okay, cool, get them. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, well, clearly we're not going to be able to uh, beat that response. So uh, <laughs> thank you all for yes. chatting with us. Congratulations on the film. And I uh, can't wait to see what the response is like from folks. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So fun. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye.